coaches are so much easier to fire and make scapegoats than players. And it's just a fact. And it's arguably true to an extent, right? Because we've seen players getting better because they're young men, right? They're 22, 23, 24 years old. It, sometimes it just takes the right guy to teach you something. And then, you know, you pick up on something new and now you're, you're really, really good at football. Directly to answer, I think if you go in with the same coaching staff and the same quarterback, I think you're just asking for, that'll remind me of the last Matt Nagy year of this just like disjointed hot mess where no one communicates well and nobody knows how to be on the same page. I think if you go into next year with the same staff and just new draft picks, I expect nothing different. I don't care how good your draft picks are. I think you're a seven or eight win team because I think you're going to lose three games that you should have won and you're going to win three games that you should have lost because that's what this team would be. It's such an unenviable job for Ryan Poles right now because we are so confused. And there's and it's not just we. We are a minimal channel with minimal guys. There's professionals who do this for a living who have really no idea what to do. I think some guys would say keep fields, keep the picks, keep building through the draft. Some guys are saying you can't skip out on Caleb Williams, you know, talents and you can't skip out on this opportunity to take a first overall pick. And you're both right. Everybody's you know, right. And I, at first I thought everybody was wrong. And now I just think everybody's right because I, I will be completely content with any outcome of this offseason other than running it back. One of the things Dan Orlovsky said before the season was that Fields is a bust. And at the start of the season, he said Fields is going to be an MVP. And you know what? I hate the guy, so I stopped following him. I don't know what he's saying now, but I'm sure it's gone back and forth. You're right. Even even the guys that are doing this for a living don't know what they're talking about. For me, personally, I'm kind of with you. Like, no matter which way this goes at this point, the only opinion that really truly matters here is Ryan Poles's. However, there are some situational details that can apply to the situation that I can kind of lean on to help me sway a little bit more from one side to the other. I think the biggest detail for me is that Fields does not need to get paid yet. We, are, we do not need to pay him big money right now. He still has a fourth year on his rookie deal. He still potentially has a fifth year option if you truly want to pick that up, which would wind up being like twenty three million, which is still like half the money that a top tier quarterback contract is, right? And even at that, you can still always franchise tag him after that. I mean, Kirk Cousins got franchise tagged twice, and I know at that point you're paying him top five money. Listen, there's still plenty of options available with the Justin Fields path financially. If this was your four and you needed to commit yourself financially to him at the end of the year, I think the water would be boiling a little bit more. Right now it's just hot, right? So that is an argument towards consistency, towards not shaking it up, towards keeping it the same. It's not going to cost you anything to do so. However, I do agree with you that this coaching staff is bad. Now the counter argument that everybody has towards the coaching staff conversation is that we'll look at this defense. Look at this defense. It's shaped up in the last five weeks. They're a top 10 defense in the last five weeks. And my counter argument to that would be, well, that could be very well due to the free agent signings and the talent that's on the field that was gotten by Ryan Poles. Who's to say that another defensive coordinator can't come in here and get the same, if not better, or close to the same? I don't disagree with you at all. If you keep Justin Fields and you get a new offensive coordinator, we're going to be excited because you're probably going to trade out of the first overall pick. But if you did take Caleb Williams and pick Fields or whatever, it's so many options. And I think, like you said, if it was a year later, let's say this was one year fast forward and you're like an eight or nine win team and you just missed the playoffs, that's when tensions start to get high. That's when people start to get frustrated, right? Like what's going on? Why can't you put it over the edge? People really start to lose their jobs and then people have to make really – specific decisions. And the reason I think this is so confusing to everybody, and I think this is the first time as a Bears fan I've felt this, is it is a completely fork in the road moment with a lot of different roads, right? Like if fork in the road implies like two usually, but like there's like four or five different paths this team can take right now. And 
that's why it's an unenviable position. I think if I'm speaking for myself here, but like one of the few things that we've always said, I do not like taking one player and depending on one player to make all of the difference, right? So we can agree on that, I think. Caleb Williams at his peak is absurd. He's absurdly good. I get it. I get why you weren't in love with him. I get why you want him on your team. I started watching Malik Neighbors. He's the LSU wide receiver. And I watch him and Marvin Harrison Jr. And in my head, I just think Malik Neighbors translates to the NFL better. I'm probably going to be wrong. Most people are. But at the same time, it has happened constantly where the second or third receiver taken is the best receiver in that class. The second or third quarterback taken is the best quarterback in that class. So it is what it is, but I think just as a rule, as a tenant for what we believe in, we're not sitting here saying, like, take Caleb Williams and draft all your picks. It usually never works out. But if you do, I mean, I can live with it, I guess. I'm really just focused in on, you know, the NFL, and especially with producing all these videos and making all this content and everything. Mm-hmm. I got my hands pretty full. For every year, from a very far point of view, I do notice one little trend. I don't necessarily want a guy that hit his peak in college. You know, and it's kind of how I'm feeling about Justin Fields right now. Like, seems like he hit his peak in college. 